Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jared Rydelic, and today I'm going to eat a butt ton of tomatoes. Yeah, I went to a uh, farmer's market in Syracuse, New York, of all places, and I uh, found a lot of different heirloom tomatoes. Now, heirloom tomatoes, if you don't know about them, they are tomatoes that are you know, they've been passed down through generations. A lot of them are very, very old. They, I think they're required to be 50 years old, or they have to be, like, from a certain area in order to qualify as an heirloom tomato. They're not usually commercially available, uh, on, at least, like, not on a great scale, because they have, like, a short shelf life, and they kind of, like, look kind of funky, and they don't have, like, that kind of, like, pristine look that a normal tomato does. This is a normal tomato. This is one that I just picked up at the grocery store. You see, they're, they're nice. They're exactly what you expect it to be. But then you get an heirloom tomato, and sometimes, you know, they're kind of funky, okay? They can have, like, little lines and wrinkles and weird colors and different types of colors in it. They'll be, like, a little bit green, a little bit dark, and... You never know, um, you know, what you're gonna get. There's less control in that. These are not hybrids. Uh, they are something that has just been open pollinated, which means that any kind of pollen could get in the plant, and you get all sorts of weird things as a result. So um, yeah, I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at uh, several different heirloom tomatoes and compare them and find which one is my favorite out of a bunch. This is kind of like the one, the video I did on bananas. It's just like, you know, to talk about a tomato, which you know, obviously is a fruit, is um, boring. But when you get into all the different cultivars that are available for fruits that we get at the supermarket, that's where it starts to get bizarre. So I'm going to review some that are kind of like tricky to find, um, but if you go to a farmer's market, you can track this down yourself, maybe. Or if you like to grow, these are something that's fun to grow. You can pick up some seeds online, even, and, and grow your own tomato. So, let's get to it. This is the Cherokee Purple. And, I mean, check it out. It's really beautiful. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to first cut into this guy. Cutting into it, it's much softer than a regular tomato. Wow, look at that. It looks like a dead animal. It is very juicy in there. Very liquidy. Ooh. It has like a really nice, like sweet, savory smell to it. Hmm. It just like melts in your mouth. This one's like really, really liquidy. I have not had tomato like that in a long time. Um, it's got like really nice sweet notes to it, but also a good like savory like tomatoey flavor in it. But the sweetness stands out. Um, yeah, this is really good. You just like can't even compare this to a regular tomato. It's got like so much more depth to it. This is a white tomato, or I guess it's, I mean, they had several of this, and I picked the darkest looking one, so this one's actually a little bit more yellow looking, because it's just like, I'm so used to getting, like, red tomatoes that getting something that was, like, completely white kind of freaked me out, so I got the darkest one they had, I, I chickened out, but uh, all of them are supposed to taste about the same, uh, but this one, as you can see, there's, like, no color in it. Uh, so maybe a little bit right there, so maybe a little pinkish on the bottom, but uh, I believe this is called the Great White uh, Heirloom Tomato. I'm not 100% sure, but that kind of like matches the description of this one, so correct me if I'm wrong. Now, tomatoes that are not red, if they are yellow or white or even pink or orange, they have less acid in them than red tomatoes, so this one is supposed to have low acid. Uh, so when this, this was sold to me, I asked, what is this called? They said, I don't know. It's got low acid, though. Or whatever you want to call this one. Wow. There's this, like, white all the way through it. I 
this is kind of um, kind of bland, just because there is like no sourness to it. There's like a little hint of sweetness, and there's a little bit of that tomato flavor in it, but it's very very mild. It's still good. Um, not sure if it's got more flavor than a regular tomato or not. Actually, let's find out. I'm going to take a piece of this regular tomato and compare it to the low acid tomato. Well, this tastes like garbage. I mean, this just tastes like liquid. There's no flavor whatsoever. This one, even though it's like low acid and there's like no color to it, it still has more of a sweetness and more flavor than a commercial tomato. I'm not really that surprised by that. This is the cacao, which is said just the way you would say, uh, you know, like chocolate fruit. And it looks a little bit like the Cherokee purple. You see it's got uh, this kind of like a little bit green on top, and then it gets rather dark on the bottom. But uh, it doesn't have as much of a purple tone to it. It has more of a brown tone to it. This one's a little tougher to get through than the uh, Cherokee purple, even though they look kind of similar. That's kind of cool. There's like a little bit of like green like inside there as well. It's got like a variety of colors in there. That's weird. The cacao has a very low acid to it. It's got as much sourness as the white one that I reviewed. It's kind of bland actually like a little hint of a flavor in it kind of like more fruity and like a little hint of like bitterness as well it's light but it's there it's quite sweet but not what you would really think of when you're eating a tomato uh, actually not so fond of this one but again let me try that compared to a regular slice, slice of tomato and see if it uh, stacks up at all. Oh. Yeah, it's still better than a regular tomato. It's also much softer and more succulent than a regular tomato. Just the flavor is um, a little lacking. This one, I I love this. This is a nice, cool-looking color. It's very black and shiny. I believe this is called Indigo Rose. When they sold this one to me, they were not um, so impressed with the flavor, they said. They said it's very mild, doesn't really taste like much, but uh, I had to pick it up just because of how it looks. It is, uh, you know, unlike any tomato that I've seen. Even though it's dark on the outside, it is uh, pretty much like a regular tomato on the inside. Maybe a little bit darker in some corners. Interesting. Doesn't really have much of a scent. It's kind of got a fruity smell to it. This one's weird. Um, I guess it's it's pretty sweet. There's like no sourness to it. It has a tomatoey taste, but more towards the fruit end of it. Like the first bite you taste, you take is like a little bit sour, a little sharp, and kind of like savory, like a normal tomato. But then it's got like this weird, like really sweet aftertaste to it. It's just like all right, tomato, and then a little punch of sweet that follows it. This would be good as a fruit. I like to use it in a sweet application rather than a savory one. So when you eat this, this does not taste like a normal tomato or what you'd expect a tomato to taste like. It tastes like if you took like a regular tomato and you like suck the sourness and you put like a spoon of sugar on it or something. It's yeah, odd. It's odd. Good. Better than, than the normal tomato, but odd. I wouldn't use this for like everyday tomato dishes, I would use this for something that you can like utilize that sweetness for. 
This one, I believe, is a Japanese tomato? I'm not too sure. But it is a uh, machu. A machu tomato? I'm probably saying that wrong, and you know what? I don't really care. And uh, this one, as you can see, is a little bit of a pink variety of tomato. So it should have less acid than a red tomato, and it should be a little bit sweeter. And those are um, it's supposed to be preferable in, uh, in Japan. See, it's, uh, even though this is a pink variety, it still has more color than a commercially available tomato, which um, is kind of interesting and kind of sad. Yeah, this one looks kind of just like a regular tomato on the inside. It's got a little bit of like marbling throughout it, but it's uh, pretty normal looking. Also, like, quite juicy, but still like a little bit firm. Not as soft as the Cherokee Purple or the uh, Cacao. Hmm. That's a nice flavor. It's mild and sweet. It's much sweeter than a regular, like, vine tomato. Um, reminds me a little bit of, like, tomato soup. It's got, like, a sweetness and, like, creaminess to it. So, uh, it's not very, it's not harsh. Like, it's, it goes down very easily, and it's very just kind of, like, smooth. Yeah, really good. I can see using this for certain applications that you wouldn't, use uh, normal tomatoes for. Like, so it's got like a little bit more of like a sweet, creamy taste to it, so it might be good in something that's a little bit more towards the des dessert end of things. But, um, yeah, pretty good. And the last but not least, we have the New Girl. The New Girl has a, uh, it's a little bit closer to the commercial variety. It actually looks quite similar to it. Um, this one has like more of like an orangish, reddish tinge to it, but it's got, uh, this one as you can see has a little bit yellowing on top. That's, um, not always going to be the case. Maybe this one just didn't get enough sun there or something. Yeah, also just like a normal tomato. Hmm. That was a good tomato. That is probably the closest to regular store-bought, like, tomatoes on the vine that you would get. But it goes down easy. Like, you put it in your mouth and it just takes, like, two bites and it just kind of, like, dissolves in your mouth. It's very, like, succulent and juicy. Um, but it's similar to the regular tomato in a lot of ways. It looks like it. And it um, has a similar kind of taste. It's got that savory tomato taste to it. So if you're looking for like a, you want like a tomato that just like tastes like a good tomato, like a normal tomato, like nothing, like no, no weirdities to it, nothing kind of like strange, just like a good old tomato to use for normal tomato things. So the new girl is the way to go. Out of all of these fruits that I've had, all of these tomatoes that I've had, my favorite would be this guy, the Cherokee Purple. It's got a nice juiciness to it, it's got a nice sweetness to it, a good savory taste. It is like a normal tomato, but it's got extra little nuances in there that is really nice. It's also like a good size, and it looks cool. Like, I'd say like this one overall is the best. Uh, after that, I would go with maybe um, the Machu, where are you? Yeah, the Machu tomato, or however you're supposed to say this one, um, it offers something a little bit different. It's sweet. It doesn't have as much acid to it, but it still has like a nice tomato flavor. It's just milder. So I can see using this as a replacement for tomatoes, but to give like a different kind of like aspect to what you're using the tomatoes for. I say the cacao would be next because this one is kind of bizarre in flavor, just with that, that kind of fruitiness that it has, but it's still quite nice. Like, I can use this for um, dishes with tomatoes in it, but it's, um, because it's got like a different kind of flavor to it, you might not want to use it for the same things you would use a regular tomato for. You might want to think about it before you use it, but it's still quite nice and it gives something different to um, the party. Yeah, I say the indigo rose after that for the same reason as the cacao, just like similar fruitiness. You might not want to use it for regular tomato things, but still quite nice and useful. After that, I would go with the white one. Doesn't have much flavor. 
you know, it's better than a regular standard tomato, but it's still uh, quite bland. So I would use this because it looks cool. You know, it looks white, but it still has the flavor of a ripe tomato, just super mild. So I would go this more on looks than anything else. And then uh, below all else, we have the regular commercial vine tomato, which is not good whatsoever and would only really be useful if you can't get anything else. After trying all these tomatoes, you know, normally I would buy these things, so like cooking with tomatoes, like, you know, whatever. But after trying all these and, like, getting all these different types of flavors and strong flavors, too, it makes me realize, like, how bad our regular tomatoes are. And this was, like, I'm not, like, getting a bad one, either. Like, I went there and I got, like, the nicest-looking vine tomato that they had, and even then, it's harsh, but it's not flavorful. It's got, like, this mushy, bland center to it. So there's, like, flavor in there, but a lot of it is just, like, I don't know, like, filler. So overall, like, regular tomatoes are really not good for much of anything. Like, I'd say, like, any kind of tomato here would be better than one of these. And, you know, when a white tomato that is used because it is mild has more flavor than a regular tomato, then you can tell that there's something wrong. So I had the best idea in the world, and I just took all those tomatoes, I cut them up, and I made the most kick-ass tomato salad. You know, I was thinking of putting some olive oil or some salt on this, or some basil or something. It doesn't need it. This is just, like, good just the way it is. It's very, like, juicy and refreshing. It feels like I'm eating, like, cut-up watermelon or something. It doesn't taste like that, but it's got, like, that kind of refreshing taste to it. Yeah, so one more thing. Um, I ate as much as I possibly could of those tomatoes, and I still had a lot of tomatoes left. So I decided to actually try cooking it, and I made a tomato soup. But <laughs> what's really bizarre about this is, you know, normally when I make tomato soup, you know, I put, like, a small onion in, and, like, I don't know, a couple pounds of tomatoes, and I'll put in, like, two cups of water. This has no water in it. It is, like, the tomatoes are so much juicier that I'm not adding two cups of water, I'm adding zero cups of water, because it doesn't need it. And, um, yeah, I put a little bit of basil in there and a chili, but, like, that is it. Like, and it doesn't even really need salt. I put, like, a little pinch in, but it doesn't even really need it. It's got so much flavor, like, just on its own that it's kind of remarkable. Like, it is, like, you just take these tomatoes and grind them up and you basically have soup. I would, like, add an onion, but that's really all you need. Yeah, I've already tried this, but just so you can watch me try it again and get jealous. remarkably good. And like all of those tomatoes combined together is really nice. So it might be a good way to use heirloom tomatoes if you're not sure what kind to get. Get a whole bunch like me and just like mix them together and it kind of like, I mean they all have you know inherently like a kind of similar flavor. They're all tomatoes. So if you like combine them together they like really work well with each other. And this doesn't taste like any kind of tomato soup that I've had before. It's got like a very like deep complexity to it and um, really good. So, you know, I said before that, you know, maybe this is be it's best to use heirloom tomatoes for um, using them fresh and raw. Uh, cook them! You could cook them too! And it's still unbelievably good. That's all I have to say. Thanks, guys. Hey guys, I want to give a huge shout out to Destin from the channel Smarter Every Day. Smarter Every Day is a pretty popular YouTube channel. If you haven't checked it out, uh, it's about this guy. He travels around in the pursuit of science. So, you know, if you like what I do with fruit, he's kind of doing it with everything else. So, uh, you know, check out his channel if you haven't seen it already. It's really, really cool. I'm already hooked on it. Uh, he contributed to my Patreon page in order to help me out a little bit uh, for the next few months. So if you um, want to help out too and make my series grow even bigger, just click on this screen or go to the description below and click on the links to go to my Patreon page where you can find out more. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye.